What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're gonna be talking about a couple of stocks that I'm currently holding right now, what I'm trading as of the 28th of February in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I personally like and see potential in heading into the March month, really tomorrow here, in the trading week, starting off March, what am I personally watching? So for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, you enjoy the content here on YouTube, feel free to hit that like button. And of course, if you're new and I do earn your subscription, feel free to subscribe as well. I do appreciate every single one of you out there that watches these videos on a day-to-day -day basis. Even if you stop in once a week and watch the videos, I appreciate you all so much because without you, none of this stuff here on YouTube YouTube would be possible. So let's talk about, you know, what went down today in the overall market, starting off with the SPX here, the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. We can see we ended up closing the day today down about $8, down about 0.28%, nearly 0.3% of a red day here on the S&P 500, the Dow Jones down about $70 on the day, down around the same as the SPX, down about 0.27%. And the NASDAQ composite, guys, up about $7.75 on the day, up around 0.1%, holding that $7,100 level pretty nicely at the close of the market. So overall today, guys, you know, judging off the indices, not much crazy movement. It was another kind of boring day in the overall stock market, but we're, there were a couple of stocks that did very well that we're going to be talking about here in about 5-10 minutes, so stay tuned. Later on in this video, we're going to be talking about those couple of stocks, but in terms of the major indices, you know, not much movement, not too exciting, uh, you know, not too great of a day. But judging off of these technicals, guys, we do get a story from the SPX right here and, of course, from the Dow and the NASDAQ that we're going to be talking about here in a couple of minutes. But starting off with the SPX, we can see... We're having trouble getting out of that 2790 resistance from back in the beginning of December where we plummeted all the way down to about 2330 and obviously since then we climbed all the way back out to that resistance where we're struggling to get out of right now. And for those of you guys that were watching the SPX over the past week and a half or so, and you guys have been paying attention to these videos, you know we actually got rejected by the second resistance here from back in the beginning of November at about 28.15. I believe this was about like five, five days ago or something like that. We got up to 28.15. It was looking like we were trading between the uh, old resistance, with, which at this point was a new support, and this resistance resistance up here, but over the past couple of days, the three days in general, we've been making lower lows, pushing down in the overall SPX, and pushing beneath that 2790 support, closing the day today at about 2785. And if I show you guys here on a closer time frame, we can see starting on the 26th of February, we've been making lower lows each closing day, right? We can see we close at about 2795 on this day. The next day, we close at about 2790. And the day that just closed today, about an hour and 45 minutes ago, we ended up closing at about 2785. So the closing prices over the past one, two, and three days have been continuously decreasing. So that really means that on a shorter term basis here, the SPX is falling in price. But what are we seeing on this longer term chart here, the 30 day, 90 minute? We're noticing that due to the markets falling from about 28.15 down to about 27.85, we notice that we're at the bottom of this channel now on this 30 day, 90 minute chart where this has bounced, you know, the candlesticks, the SPX has bounced on the levels we are currently at based off this trend line and the 50 simple moving average a couple of times in the past. We can see it once here, twice, three times. You can count this four times, five times. And now we're testing it again for the sixth 
time. So what am I personally watching tomorrow and what you guys should honestly be watching as well if you do do analysis on the overall markets including the S&P 500 which I assume you all do since it is the most important index out there for the U.S. markets. You should be watching on whether or not we're going to end up breaking out of this downward, not downward, this uh, support right here on the trend line as well as the 50 SMA because let me tell you if we break to the bottom here that's going to be a huge downside pattern there could be much more downwards you know momentum you know to the downside if we do end up breaking this key technical spot to the downside right but let's say tomorrow we do see some green we do end up breaking back into the 2790 level we break this resistance that could be a sign that we're continuing the uptrend pattern and from there we could potentially be testing 2800 2810 and of course this 2815 resistance that we do see from back in the beginning of November so based on the SPX guys not much change from yesterday's session. We we're only down about $7, but we're at a very, very critical spot where if we do break here, again, that could be a downwards move. We could be headed to the 50 SMA on the 184-hour chart if we do end up breaking that key technical spot tomorrow. But of course, if we end up holding, breaking that 2900 level, we're not $2,900 level, $2,790 level, we could be headed back up for some more green in the overall market. So that is what the SPX is looking like today, guys. Nothing too crazy whatsoever. The Dow Jones today, very similar to the SPX over the past couple of days. We pushed up and we got rejected by resistance a couple of months back. Same resistance as the SPX. Well, it kind of it kind of correlates the same because um, the beginning of November is when we popped up in the SPX, and that really is when we popped up in the Dow Jones as well. You can see it right here at about twenty six thousand two hundred and fifty dollars, and that is where we pushed up on the twenty fifth of uh, what is it February a couple days ago, and from there. We got rejected, obviously, we can see, and now we're holding this old resistance from the beginning of December as a new support level. So in terms of the Dow Jones, guys, what am I going to be watching for more potential downside or more potential upside is whether or not we're going to end up holding this support tomorrow, really right where we are right now at about $25,850, $25,900. And if we take a look a bit closer here, on the 30-day, 90-minute chart, we can extend this channel drawing a bit so we can see where we could potentially be bouncing for more upside action or where we could potentially be breaking for more downside action. So just like the SPX, we are right at that channel of support on this 30-day, 90-minute chart on the Dow Jones right around $25,900. So keep an eye for the break on the downside. This could be a very, very big move, uh, you know, downwards breaking pattern for the Dow Jones. And of course, if we do end up pushing tomorrow to the upside, this could just be one sign that we're headed back and continuing this uptrend pattern that we do see here on this 30-day, 90-minute chart. So very simple, guys. Nothing too crazy, right? Nothing too crazy whatsoever. Just keep an eye on those levels. Very, very important, you know, when deciding on what you're going to be trading for that day, right? Obviously, if the markets are pushing heavily to the red side on a, on a specific day, that means that a lot of the stocks that comprise that index, comprise that market, they're doing bad as well, and you won't want to trade them, right? But obviously, if the markets are doing well, you might want to hop into some of these stocks that are causing the market to do very well, if that makes any sense, right? So that's what the Dow Jones is looking like. Again, nothing too crazy. The NASDAQ composite here, we've been struggling to get above the 7,130 level, 7,150 level. For those of you guys that have been following the NASDAQ and especially this channel over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about this because literally, guys, if we can see on this 10-day, 30-minute chart, we can see there's been a top here, a top here, pretty much a top here and it's looking like we topped again that's four separate resistances right that's four separate um, you know failures pretty much of getting above that resistance so that just goes to show how hard of a resistance this is 
for the NASDAQ. And of course, the tech stocks selling off like Apple, Facebook. I'm sure, actually, you probably can't see them because my face is there, but Apple's down about $1.75 today. Facebook's down about $1.40. Amazon down about $1.25. Netflix down about $5. You know, these tech stocks, they have a heavy weight on the NASDAQ, and the fact that they're doing poorly. You know, that's not going to really um, be a good thing, right, for the NASDAQ composite here. So what am I watching on a technical basis in terms of the NASDAQ? Very simple, guys. I'm waiting to see are we going to break out of this 7130 resistance, treat it as a new support to then start to fill back up to this next resistance, which is going to be at about 7225 Dollars. So very simple, guys. We've been talking about how the NASDAQ is more towards the bottom of this channel. That is still valid. We can see it here based off of these uh, channel trend lines. And if we take a bit uh, of a closer look, we can see it even better. Let's say we do end up bouncing here tomorrow. Let's say we don't break to the downside. We do not see downwards push. We end up popping up. I think, I honestly think, we'll be able to plow through this resistance over these next couple of days on a technical basis excuse me, and we'll be headed back up, excuse me again, to about, you know, the $7,200 level. We'll be, we'll be able to test this next resistance at that point. But of course, until we see that break, until we see that, we really can't say anything about, you know, the NASDAQ pushing to the upside because we haven't really seen a confirming strong push, you know, to the upside, guys. We've been struggling. Four tops here, literally one, two, three, four. We need to see that break up for us to continue this uptrending pattern. So in terms of the overall markets, guys, like I've been saying every single video, it seems like we are at very, very critical spots right now. We are at support levels. If we have another couple of red days, we're going to be out of this uptrending pattern. Finally, we're going to be pushing down and the bears are slowly, slowly going to start creeping out. So that is what the overall markets are looking like. Let's talk about what I'm personally trading as of right now. In terms of my day trading today, no day trading for me today on the 28th of February, but I did end up buying some Coca-Cola stock yesterday. For those of you guys that watched my video yesterday and this morning as well, I actually mentioned it in this morning's video. For those of you guys that didn't watch this morning's video, go check it out. And I am actually thinking about doing more morning videos for those of you guys that want to see what I'm personally trading for the upcoming day, right? That morning. So let me know down below if you guys would like to see some more morning videos. I would love to start making more of those if there is some demand in those videos. But anyway, I said I was trading Coca Cola stock this morning. And in yesterday's video, I mentioned how I was thinking about taking a position before the market closed. And that's actually exactly what I ended up doing in terms of Coca-Cola stock. So why I wanted to trade this one originally and when I plan on adding more money, let's go over that right now. So for those of you guys that didn't catch yesterday's video, the brief analysis on Coca-Cola here is that I'm trading it because A, we have a dividend coming up in a couple of days here, uh, in about two weeks actually, and that dividend is going to pay out 40 cents. We can see that here. The annual dividend for Coca-Cola, I believe, is around 3.5%. So that's going to be about a 0.8, uh dividend. So right off the bat, what that means, guys, if I put in $10,000, I'm going to be getting nearly 1% which is a guaranteed 100% return. Not 100%, I wish, guys. A $100 return on the money. And I got in. That's one of the factors why I got in. And another reason why is because we were holding the support at about $44.50 to $45 for you know a couple of days here, and we were actually making some ground to the upside. So that's one of the reasons we held the support from back in the end of uh, August 2018, back in the beginning of October. October in 2018. And now why I want to add more money into Coca-Cola or rather when I'm going to add more money is when we break above $46. So I'm currently in at about $45. I literally got in at the market close yesterday, no lie, at about $45 roughly right around here. I got in and now I want to see a break out of the $46 range, which is going to be putting us out of this 50 SMA resistance. And what do we notice right now, guys, in terms of Coca-Cola? Well, we're seeing some resistance at this 50 SMA, which is a little bit worrisome for me to add more money right now, which is why I want to see the full-on break out of this resistance 
out of this $46 level before me adding more money because that's going to break out of this one resistance and the next resistance. So that's two breaks of uh, resistances there, which is a very good sign that we're heading back up in terms of Coca-Cola stock. And another interesting thing about Coca-Cola stock, guys, a lot of people view this, it really is a defensive stock, meaning whenever growth stocks are starting to fall into shambles like we saw back in October, we can literally see it here, a lot of people start flooding their money into quote-unquote safer stocks, value stocks, Coca-Cola being one of those stocks. And what do we see? Back in the beginning of uh, October here, Coca-Cola was at the same support that we are right now, and we ended up soaring up nearly 10%, 12% in the stock's price as the overall markets were getting crushed, guys. Remember, October to the end of December was an absolute bloodbath in the stock market. We were down about 16 20% raging across the three major indices. And what were people doing, guys? They were selling, they were selling, they were selling their growth stocks, panicking, 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 and flooding their money into companies like Coca-Cola. Another one, for example, McDonald's. I'm pretty sure this one did very well as well, right? You can see it here. This is a real-life example Beginning of October from $163 up to $190 in the beginning of uh, uh, December. Even McDonald's gave a little bit in December, but still from $163, we ended up closing up $10 from the beginning of October to the end of December, where most of, most of the stocks in the stock market were getting crushed, right? Another one I think did pretty well was probably Procter & Gamble, right? These are all considered defensive stocks. You can see all of these have been doing very well when the stock market, you know, has been falling. So does this mean that I think the stock market is going to fall since I am buying in right now? That doesn't necessarily mean that at all. But since markets are pretty high right now, I feel comfortable putting some money into a, you know, defensive stock here like Coca-Cola and holding it while we are high in the market because we've been talking about how the markets are up nearly 20% in 2019 alone, and I do expect if we pull back significantly, right, who knows, guys, we could pull back 5-10% in the next month and a half, two months. You know, Coca-Cola will probably do very well once stock, once stocks start to sell off, we get a little bit more panicky in the markets. If that does end up happening, not saying it's going to happen 100%, Coca-Cola could end up doing very well, but again, do your own research, please, guys. Do not, do not, do not buy this off of my opinion, opinion alone. That is not how you're going to become successful at all when it comes to trading and investing in the stock market. So that's pretty much the synopsis on my Coca-Cola trade. I'm in right now, $45. I want to get this dividend. I want to add more on the break above 46 But let's say it doesn't go my way. I do have a stop loss set about 1%, 2% below where we currently are right now. And I'm scaled in with about 15, 20% of my goal position this way. If the stock doesn't go my way, I lose 2% on a smaller position, right? Rather than me jumping in with a full 100% position right off the bat, I would lose more dollar value if I do have to cut losses in that situation, which is why I always preach when it comes to swing trading, you must, well, you should. Don't do it 100% based off my opinion. Scale into your positions. It'll save you money, uh, you know, over time, in my personal opinion and through my experiences. So that's Coca-Cola, guys. Very quick synopsis there. Another one that I'm currently still holding is Johnson & Johnson, guys. I'm up, you know, a very small amount on this position. I got in about 10, 14 days ago at this point. It was like last trading week, I believe, or the week before. I forget, but I'm in Coca-Cola and Johnson & Johnson right now. I'm up about 1%, not even on Johnson & Johnson. Planning on holding this one as long as it's continuing the uptrend pattern as it currently is. And I plan on selling at this resistance right here at about $140. And this is a longer term swing trade, guys. This is probably going to stem about a month, month and a half, maybe even two months, however long it takes to get back up here. And if it does get back up there. And once I am in the profit, guys, heavily, you know, I'm going to set a trailing stop loss to protect my gains. And I do recommend people out there to use trailing stop losses to protect your gains, especially if you're up 5% plus on a position, maybe even like 2-3% plus. Very important to put that in place, especially if you're not active at your computer, guys, and especially to protect 
your gains because once you're in the profit, you want to stay that way. You don't want to have you know the stock go up 3%, you're in the 3% profit, and then all of a sudden it falls back down and it hits your stop loss and you end up losing your money when you could have taken you know a little bit of gain if you had a trailing stop loss set in the first place. So that's a quick little trading update, guys. I didn't day trade today because honestly, I didn't see many opportunities out there and I did miss out on some stocks that we're going to be talking about right now, which were day tradable. But again, I missed out. Kind of mad at myself because I did call out two of these stocks. But hey, stuff happens, guys. Stuff happens. You can't catch everything. And I always preach, don't be too greedy. Don't try to catch every trade because you're going to get bit in the butt. So while we're at it, let's talk about some stocks that did very well today and that I see potential in over these next couple of days slash weeks before we do end off this video. So the first one, guys, I'm sure you knew I was going to talk about this one today was Square, ticker symbol SQ. And they reported their earnings right now, today I believe, or, or uh, pre-market hours, whatever, I don't really know exactly, but they reported their earnings. Short story, they tanked on their earnings report. And if we take a look here on live news, we can see Square sees Q1 adjustment earnings, EPS, $0.06 per share versus 0.11 estimated adjusted sales, $472 million versus, uh, you know, $470 million estimated sees EPS. Okay, okay, okay. So all in all, guys, their earnings report, based off what I see right here, it wasn't great, but it wasn't too bad. But the stock, again, I'm not really an investor in Square. I don't look too deep into Square stock, but I do trade it once in a while based off of the technicals. And we can see based off their earnings report, the stock went down pretty heavily today, guys, from about 70. Oh, it looks like they reported yesterday after market hours. So from $81 yesterday closing price, it went down to $73. And we ended up filling that entire gap, guys, the entire gap back up to $83 today, which is absolutely amazing. That's literally like a 12% move. And again, this is a stock that I called out, did not end up getting in on this action. I'm pissed at myself. I could have day traded this one. But again, I'm not getting too greedy here. And it's okay if you miss plays once in a while. You're not going to end up catching every single move. But to get into it, guys, on why I see potential in this over the next couple of days, well, what do we see we're doing here in terms of square stock. We can see we popped up here to $83 on square stock, like I said, and now we're pulling back into the market close and aftermarket hours here, and we're holding this old resistance as a new support. So very simple. What I'm looking to see happen in terms of square stock over these next couple of days is I want to see it hold this $81 level and slowly start to push back up to about $83 for that gap fill. And the beautiful thing about it, guys, is that we already pushed up the $83, and now we pulled back, opening up that margin of profit. So tomorrow, we're going to see, are we going to hold this support here at about $81? Excuse me, and are we going to slowly start to fill back up? That is what I'm watching in terms of Square Stock, ticker symbol SQ. Very interested in playing this one. And guys, it's looking good, looking good on a technical basis right now. So Square Stock, very, very solid there. Another one that I'm watching, which one was it, guys, off the top of my head, was ticker symbol LUV. This one is, uh, is South Air, uh, what's it called? Southwest Airlines. And this is another one that I called out. Did not end up getting in this one, but I know some of the group members in the Discord chat ended up trading this one today, which really offered a ton, a ton of uh, margin here. We can see it's up about 4.07% on the day. And while we were watching this one in the beginning, guys, well, we saw it was holding a couple of days ago when I ended up making this video and this call out. We were holding about $54 old resistance as a new support. Ended up popping above it today, guys. We broke out of this, uh, you know, other resistance at about $55. And now what I'm watching to see, guys, is for us to pull back a bit and hold $55 as a new support before we slowly start to fill the gap back up to about $57, which would be the next resistance. So, you know, from $55, if we do end up pulling back a bit, which we are um, looking like, you know, could potentially happen. 
due to it being a bit overbought right now on this 184 hour chart we could potentially get let's see how much gain that is about a four percent profit from about fifty five dollars back up to fifty seven dollars and of course if we continue the uptrend we break out of that resistance from there back up to fifty eight fifty from fifty five dollars that's probably going to be roughly a six percent uh you know margin of profit there so luv guys very interesting big big move today uh missed it missed it but but still, I'm going to be watching it over these next couple of days to see if it pulls back so we can get a better entry point on ticker symbol LUV. So let's take a look at some other ETFs very quickly. In terms of stocks, guys, KO, Coca-Cola, LUV, and Square are the three main ones that I'm currently watching right now to trade and to add more money into in terms of coca Cola. So let's say tomorrow we end up selling off more in the overall stock market. The SPX breaks that support we were talking about. I'm going to be looking to day trade TVIX. TVIX is an ETF that goes up whenever the markets are selling off. Specifically, the SPX is what it tracks very closely. And simply, guys, if the SPX breaks that support. It starts to push down. It forms a downwards formation. TVIX is going to be in a position to do very well. If we can see over these past couple of days, every time the market ended up being, you know, a little bit funky, we sold off. TVIX did absolutely amazing, right? This one day in particular from two days literally went up 11%. This one day here from $34 up to about $37. That's again about a 10 12% move. We saw it a couple of days ago when the markets pulled back from 2815 down to where we are roughly right now. Another 10% move in TVIX. So I'm going to be watching, guys. If we sell off drastically tomorrow, this could be a huge, huge potential day trade that could offer up to 10%. We've seen this literally this ETF go up 25% back in the December 2018 days. And back in those two months guys you i know you guys remember that i've been following me for a while now you remember i've been trading or i was trading rather tvix on a day-to-day -day basis when we were selling off and it was fun people were calling me the tvix king pretty funny because i was literally trading this one non-stop this is the only etf that i was trading but now the markets have been showing a little bit of you know upside push obviously which is why i've been forming or not forming uh, focusing rather more on swing trades over these past couple of weeks. But of course, I've still been day trading, which is why I'm still going to be watching these leveraged ETFs like UWT and uh, UGAS as day trades tomorrow and TVIX as well as TQQQ, which is actually a market ETF that goes up when the markets are going up. So let's say tomorrow the markets end up popping up at the support we currently are at. TQQQ. It's going to be an ETF that does very, very well because it tracks the overall market and it goes up when the markets are going up in price. So overall tomorrow, guys, you know, I'm going to be watching the three stocks we mentioned, TQQQ, TVIX, as well as UWT to see if it's going to continue this uptrend pattern. It trades based upon crude oil. We all know that by now. If we break above $16, guys, this one, in my opinion, can slowly fill the gap back up to $16.50 and even continue the uptrend if crude oil continues to push and especially if crude oil gets into the $58 range and breaks above this resistance right here at about $57.50 to $58. So that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you're new and drop a comment. Let me know what did you end up trading today. I would love to know. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Again, I really appreciate everybody out there for watching. Have a great night. Peace out.